Hi, my name is Shoili Pal, and I'm a data scientist at the Home Depot. I'm here at NomConf today to talk about project intake forms. As a data professional, you have probably come across the following situation in some form or another. You present an analysis, and someone in the room says, I'd like to see this follow-up piece of information. This could come from not having requested sufficient information to get a full picture, or wanting to impress someone with their questions, or new things have come up since the original request. Then everyone in the room wants to know this additional info. However, you know that this will take you three days of working with SQL or your tool of choice and will shift the rest of the projects that you have to work on and deliver to other stakeholders. So you prioritize the best you can, or you ask your manager and they prioritize the best they can, but without a process in place, your other stakeholders may feel like their expected deadlines aren't being met and you may end up in an an awkward conversation justifying timelines, especially when your stakeholders aren't used to working with data science partners and are shifting priorities, or if your team works with many different teams of stakeholders. This is a problem that many data analysis teams face. The follow-up analyses are often a reasonable follow-up, but how do we organize these shifting timelines? So we at the Home Depot Online team use a project intake form. And while it's not a perfect solution, it is a pretty good one. It's easy to implement and it's free. So here's what an example intake form looks like. I will mention here for le legal reasons that this is not a real project, I made it up. So as you can see, this form has a top half that the stakeholder fills out, whether it's a product manager or somebody else in your case. Um, and they fill out a description of the project, whether it's an existing or a new project, their ideal timeline, their requirements and a deliverable, and then um, some other metrics like the estimated value or GSM and any other relevant metrics. The bottom half is filled out by you, the data scientist. And here we fill out what data we need, um, whether we have access to it, clarify the deliverable, and then break it down into steps. And that way we can estimate the duration that each step will take. There is also a second half, um, a second page of this um, intake form that I don't think anyone has ever filled out, but we're optimistic, it'll happen someday. So how does this form help? Who fills it out? When do they do it? And then what do we do with it? So we fill this form out every time we get a new request we found that it's best to fill it out jointly with the stakeholder instead of asking them to fill it out. This way, both parties are present and can make sure that the desired outcome is something that the stakeholder wants, covers all their needs, as well as something the data science scientist understands and can deliver. Also, if a field can't be filled out, you know why. For example, a project may be for internal learning purposes, and not have a dollar value attached to it. Once you have this filled out form, you can throw all of these forms into a document or a slide deck. You can mark off the complete ones and rank the rest by whatever metric your team wants to rank them by. It could be the estimated value of the projects, estimated durations, whether it's an existing project which needs something added to it or a brand new one, and even, yes, the importance of the stakeholder. These are all valid metrics. This form is pretty multi-purpose. We've used it for everything our team does from analyses, models, A-B tests, new feature requests. And it's also a handy tool to communicate what you're working on and when you'll get to the next task. It's been pretty helpful for us and I hope this talk has been helpful for you. Thank you.